Hey guys, it's Alex from the Fabled Academy. Thank you so much that you're joining in today's video because this is a special one for me. We are reviewing a draft game that I played at my local armory with the hero Verdans from the set Rosetta and Flesh and Blood. I really like playing Verdans like I showed you in my last couple of videos when playing draft. And I have to say Verdans is so interesting, but not only Verdans, Osilio is interesting too. And this game I'm going against Osilio. I end up winning it, but I want to review this game with you to see what went good, what went wrong and what maybe could have done better. And I think it was even a little bit tight at the end. So I think it's interesting to watch. So let's jump into the video. I did not review this video yet. So this will be my first time seeing um, yeah, the game after playing it. And yeah, shout out to Card Trader 24 here. We we're playing in the store. Um, we are just getting ready, shuffling our decks, um, preparing our equipment. And also, yeah, I speed up the video so we don't uh, we don't really have to watch everything. Let me see where it gets started there. So we are now rolling. We are rolling who goes first. And I think I ended up going first. So yeah, so I'm going first. As you can see, I mean, you can watch the draft picks video too. Um, then you can see, yeah, what kind of cards I picked um, for this deck. But you can see I only have one equipment on the board, the Helm of Ligno Vitae and uh, my opponent. Uh, my opponent has three equipments. So he has the Twinkle Toes, so he can prevent two damage. He has the Ink Lined Cloak, so he can gain one resource. And then he has um, the Head Equipment, which he can then prevent one damage off. And looking at this perspective, uh, I yeah, I usually take my um, camera equipment with me to the local army so I can record this view. And uh, I have a Fruits of the Forest in my hand, I saw. Um, let us see what my first play here will be. Like I said, this is a good play to do um, yeah, anyways with Verdans because now activating the staff gives me an amp one. I pitch two fruits of the forest. I believe they are two, ye both yellow. So if this deals arcane damage, I get an embodiment of earth. Um, and then I play perennial aether bloom in red. So it goes off for four arcane damage. And let's see if actually my opponent prevents it. And I think it's a good idea to prevent at least one damage here. So I don't get the card under my deck again. And I think, yeah, Roman, shout out to you. And Roman is just making sure we're having the life totals on board. So, yeah, there. There are the life totals. I think he's yeah just thinking about whether he wants to activate uh, the sanctuary, but he doesn't. And now he goes down to 14 already. I'm getting the perennial aether bloom under my deck again, getting the embodiment of earth. So this is just a perfect start for me. Getting an arsenal card. Um, I didn't see which card it was, but now I get to draw four cards, fresh new hand, and. So I see an arcane twinning, another fruits of the forest, as you might have uh, seen in my draft pick video. I picked uh, six fruits of the forest and I played them all. And now Roman is going off with open the floodgates. So going off with three arcane damage. And if this deals, uh, yeah, three damage, then he goes, he gets to draw two cards. I also have a cookie for this game here, actually, I really want to get some snack. So I'm not blocking. I didn't really think that, yeah, he will gain that much advantage um, 
withdrawing two cards because he already had cards in his hand, so he will get an arsenal nonetheless. Um, didn't need the embodiment. Then uh, it's my turn again. So I'm going on and playing a red fruits of the forest here, pitching a uh, strength of the four seasons for it, uh, coming in with seven. Just a casual seven. And this is quite scary uh, if he doesn't want to block because then he loses half of, of half of his life points and he has a lightning surge in his arsenal. So I think he wants to um, gain advantage of that possibility. I really need some bites, guys. <laughs> so he's blocking for three here. And he has blocked with Overflow the Aether uh, Wind, I think is the name. It's a red one. Um, now he's getting off an ele electrotastic discharge. Mm, I think the lightning surge is yellow, if I don't mistake, and the electrotastic electro discharge too. Yeah, so it comes in for four with go again. Um, physical damage. I think I end up just taking it. Of course, it has go again from the arsenal. Just thinking about it here. Um, not sure what the card is in my hand. Oh yeah, photon splicing in blue. Blocking three, that's kind of good. I'm blocking, uh, yeah, three points of value with four points of value on this side. Um, he needed, uh, so I'm not blocking the four value. I'm blocking three value off his four value that he needed to come up with two cards and I only need to commit one card. So I think that's good trade here for me. So he is uh, pitching for Volzar. So amp two. And his trailblazing ether goes, uh, yeah, goes up to five. And that's kind of good, but he doesn't have a follow up. So, uh, yeah. And the thing is, too, with uh, he blocked with um, the red overflow, the ether well which could have been three, um, three arcane damage. And I would have needed to commit my sanctuary, I think, to prevent any of that damage. Yeah, just making sure he doesn't have a follow-up. So I'm not sure why I'm not um, amping 
this stuff beforehand. So I think I could have pitched, uh, get an amp of this stuff and come in for four with the photon splicing. Let's see what if, if he is preventing anything. Yeah, he's coming in with the sigil um, that prevents one arc in damage. Then he can prevent two additional damage with uh, his twinkle toes because he played an instant card. And he gets an embodiment off of the sigil. Yeah, maybe I wanted to really hold on to the one card that I had in hand. But I'm still not sure what is in my arsenal. That's some, um, even though I can see some of the cards, I hope you too. Let me know in the comments. So there's a save the thought getting discarded. To get the Auxilio effect off. And here's an, um, a Fry. And what's the card's name again? It has a three attack, I think, right? Because it's a yellow one. Oh no, it has four. Yeah, it comes in for one for five or in yellow one for four. So far it's even, I think. Like uh, I could have done something a little bit better. Um, Roman too, but we'll see what that card is that I was holding on. I think uh, it was Fertile Ground. So I'm blocking two and end up taking five, going down to six. So I am a little bit on the back foot at the moment, but I think it will come back now because I have a decompose in my hand. Um, what is in the arsenal? Man, I can't see it. <laughs> it was, yeah, I think it was the decompose card, not the fertile ground that I had in my hand that I didn't want to pitch it away. That was the point. So yeah, that's just something I have to consider always like, right? Getting enough cards on the graveyard to get the decomposer up. So there comes the fry, just casual one for go again. Definitely let me know if like these kind of replays uh, are, are great to watch for you or if you think it's pretty useless. <laughs> for me at least I can learn something um, and I hope you can too. So this one would um, draw him two cards if this hits. He amped it with the Volzar and uh, I am definitely considering here pitching for the Sanctuary so he doesn't gain advantage of getting an Arsenal off of his card. Definitely need to pitch here for the Sanctuary and I remember I will, I will pitch. Which card will I pitch though? The blue arcane twinning? Yeah. So now I'm committing the sanctuary and pitching an arcane twinning plus an, um, an arcane twinning plus a um, red exploding aether. Those are two red cards that I'm committing to uh, yeah, prevent one uh, damage so it doesn't get the surge effect off in drawing two cards. 
that is enough to basically, I think, uh, yeah, then having three cards left in my hand and come back in the next turn with something else. Uh, because I have a Fruits of the Forest and uh, something else. And I really need to get, need to get another Earth card in my uh, graveyard. So I get two life and then I play the Decompose from my Arsenal. So that was um, the Tilling from my Arsenal that I had there since, since the beginning. Would have been even better if I could have pitched, um, uh, discarded the Fruits of the Forest after uh, I get the Decompose from the second uh, Decompose card, but uh, doesn't work that way because I need two Earth cards in my uh, graveyard. And that I think is a great versatility of Fruits of the Forest, just being able to, yeah, discard them whenever you want and uh, get an Earth card in your graveyard that way. And now also my Helm is online with two block value and Six six attack is not that bad considering he said eight life. So he really needs to think about how low do I want to go now uh, and potentially come back. But I think he have he has a red Fjandal's fighting spirit in hand, so he can, yeah, if he has enough blues in his hand, uh, just yeah block block five here and then come back with uh, three for seven, which is kind of nasty for me because I'm at six at the moment. And that is right what's coming. I do have though an arcane polarity and a virtual ground in uh, hand and I know now when I want to play those cards uh, on my turn I can uh, also get an offensive side of, of those cards. Now the helm comes in really clutch because I only uh, yeah lose five life here if I don't commit any other cards and that's something I can do because I have so much life gain in my hand already so I can come back and Arcan Polarity also counters um, the Arcan damage that uh, Osilio is usually taking out. I have another Fruits of the Forest. I think this in this game, Fruits of the Forest is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. And I end up taking five. It's not that dangerous in this uh, particular situation because he can't uh, yeah, tweak in one more damage to kill me. And this is the first, yeah, discard for me in my turn. I discard Fruits of the Forest, gain two, shoot for one. And I uh, can come back with Verdance again. And that is what I want to do. I'm, I think this is so powerful here, Fertile Ground. And I talked about this in my two draft pick videos already. Um, fertile Ground is just so amazing now. I'm just pitching into my deck to gain five life and shoot for one arcane. So from a situation where I had only one life and I was on the back foot, I'm coming back and having more life than my opponent and also dealing arcane damage. I mean, he can prevent the arcane damage with his uh, headpiece now, but uh, I'm just making sure the headpiece is then gone. That's, that's good too. And yeah, he's committing his uh, headpiece. Let me know how do you do it. Like I, I used to also uh, just turn my equipment around when I used it, but I think Rosetta just taught me that I just should my put my equipment when it's destroyed and it should go to the graveyard, just put it into my graveyard too. And then learn to just sort the uh, equipment out before shuffle my deck in my first, uh, in my next game. Maybe even take it out just uh, after I played the game, if I have the time to. So nothing really happening at the moment. Uh, Roman is thinking about how he wants to play his line. Or I think it is, yeah, maybe the mis this was a miscommunication, I think even, uh, I think he thought my turn was still going. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was the situation. Yeah, he thought that my turn for some reason was still going and um, yeah. Or maybe he's just thinking a little bit more and that's okay too. He has a lightning surge 
another draw two surge uh and he has the uh, yeah not the amp one but rather the uh i'm not sure about the exact wording but uh the one that is dealing one more i guess yeah Oh, I think my headphones just uh, gone out. Yeah. So he just wants to make sure he gets the surge, but he still has a card in hand. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about it. Can he potentially just sneak something in to deal four additional damage here and i'm just thinking like no I, I can just heavily take the four um he can draw two it doesn't really matter that much for me in this uh, situation because i know i can come back and i also have the arcane polarity in my uh, arsenal so i can just now that he dealt arcane damage gain four uh, life back i mean don't get me wrong the draw two is still good but um it's not that good as if he had no card in his hand, I think. And he just said, uh, I think I turned off the audio for you, but he just said, oh man, that was so bad. But yeah. Because I think as Ocilio, you really want to keep this uh, push one arcane damage more for every action and instant that deals arcane damage this turn for a turn where you can deal multiple arcane damage effects of uh, not for rather just one. So now it's my turn again. Um, with no arsenal because I played the arcane polarity, so I can uh, yeah put down another arsenal card, arsenal card this turn. So looking at my graveyard, I assume I have another decompose in my hand or just making sure for follow-up turn how I want to uh, fill my graveyard. I think there is a de the decompose in my hand. There's also a horror season. I don't think that is uh, that good to play now. Maybe if I have enough resources and then I can just gain a life because I think it's a blue one uh, in my next turn and shoot one arcane. That's okay. And I think this is a, um, a difference between the game that I will upload. Uh, also the uh, game where I went against Florian, my third game in this draft. Um, so I went uh, two, one overall. I won this game against Ocilio. I won my first game against Florian and then I lost the, the last game. And um, I think in this game particularly here now I have the edge, I am uh, dominating the game from this point on but um the harvest seasons play i'm not i'm not playing it i'm pitching it but um if i even if i would play it it's okay to play it and um it's it's not that good in my last game against Florian. let's say it like that having all these harvest seasons in blue in my deck yeah so i'm gaining a life i'm amping off the staff including uh, pitching an earth so I can get the embodiment. I'm gaining a life. He's, he's dealing uh, two arcane damage because of the amp from the staff. He's going down to four. I'm getting the embodiment. I don't get to get an arsenal, but I have the embodiment. And now I'm coming in for five. Uh, yeah, that's a five. Let's see what Roman will Roman will commit here to block. And it's an arcane twinning that blocks for three. And he is considering another block. I 
I think we'll come back with uh, another seven attack here. So yeah, he takes two. Because I think he has this card in his hand that uh, disrupts the arsenal, attacks for seven and banishes an instant card from the arsenal. But I'm not sure if he's uh, playing that now. No, another lightning surge for three go again from the arsenal here, the red one, which is pretty good, but I can just take the damage if I want to. But uh, I have to consider that, yeah, he will run some arcane damage cards. And if I take the three and he comes in with six arcane damage, I can't prevent it, then I'm dead. So I think uh, blocking it is a, it's, is a safer way here. Also, I, I need to consider he has three cards, um, so he will follow up with something, maybe even two attacks. So, and there comes the seven with arsenal disruption. It doesn't matter the arsenal disruption, but it's 10 damage in one turn, so that's quite good. Uh, but I can just take the seven here. I just wanted to make sure I block the lightning surge so I don't die to uh, arcane damage. Even though I could have blocked four value on the seven attack, I think it it, it was safer to uh, yeah play it like this, because I also have another red fertile ground and this it's just a comeback all the time with fertile ground here. He he deals one arcane damage and I'm not sure if I'm having a blue in my hand, but it could have even amped up. But yeah, I want it three arcane. Uh, <laughs> With trailblazing trail blazing Aether here, and so this is this is pretty much game, I think. Uh, even though he has one Arcane Shelter Sigil in his hand, uh, he can't prevent everything, I think. Or oh no, he can because he still have a, has his Sanctuary, right? Yeah. So he just he is just pitching for the uh, Sigil, preventing three. He has two two cards still left in his hand, including an instant that he could uh, discard for the Ocilio activation and he does so he has another lightning form in his hand and an etchings of arcana but i'm not sure if this is a red one and even even if it's a red one it doesn't really uh will turn the the game yeah so there comes the lightning form i think it's for four of it's for three it's a blue one even so i just take three and then kill him in the next turn So, yep, I am one again. I don't really need it, I think, to anti game, but uh, yeah, still safe to do. And then the Aether Quickening comes for info five. Yeah, and that's game. Phew, okay, this was pretty fun. I, I need to admit, I, I think it was sometimes a little bit slow, so definitely let me know, uh, yeah what it was like for you to watch this video if you are still on. Uh, give the video a like, so, um, yeah, that would definitely make my day. Comment down below what you think about Rosetta Draft and those kind of videos. I would also like to hear about your yeah, experience in Rosetta Draft and in Flesh and Blood. And also make sure to check out the other draft videos I have on the channel regarding uh, Rosetta. And also, um, yeah, like I said, the third game from this draft in particular, where I lose against Florian in Fatigue. Uh, I will upload that one too. So make sure to check that one out too. And we will see us in the next video.